Around the lonely campfires When the wolves began to call The riders tell the story Of the bravest wolf of all The king of all the hunters Born to lead the rest His name became a legend Across the great southwest Lobo, Lobo, his name will survive For no man could bring him in dead or alive Like everything else, a good legend's got to have a good beginning It was in the spring of 89 he was born a litter of five pups. Now these young ones were off to a good start on a number of counts. For one thing, they were lucky just having El Faros for their dad. It's a common thing in nature for the male animal to kill his offspring, if he can get to them. But the wolf's different. He's about the best parent there is because he's gentle with his young. The wolf's loyal, too. Something most folks don't realize is that wolves mate for life. At six weeks of age, Lobo wasn't much of a legend. Not yet, anyway. About the only thing different, maybe, he was a little more curious than the rest of the litter. He sort of liked to follow his nose, find out what was going on around the neighborhood. And Lobo caught on fast. The truth was, all his life he'd be one to learn from experience. What's more important? Store it up and remember it. It soon became plain that the pups were growing fast and about ready for good red meat. El Faros knew it was time to go hunting again. To feed his hungry young ones, El Faros searched for game. But there was not a scent of prey throughout his wild domain. Across the endless wastelands, his lonely trail had led. And then he spied them Pronghorn antelope, his favorite prey. His family would be fed. Back at the den, these little young'uns were being as patient as they could, excepting it wasn't natural for pups to be very patient when they were hungry. If they'd only known it, they really had something to complain about. A cougar was poking around in their vicinity. It could mean trouble real bad trouble. He stalked quietly down the rocks and approached their cave. <coughs> Seemed like right about now the wolves had been dealt a losing hand. Then, at the last minute, a wild card turned up. Some riders had spotted the cougar and dealt the final blow. About that time, El Faros came home with part of his kill. Right off, he knew something was wrong. He could have figured it out by the scent alone, but he saw the riders as they rode off toward the hills. Humans had been here. They'd probably be back. It was time to pull up stakes and move on. Once on the trail, the parents moved along at a steady lope, with the pups and their short legs trying real hard to keep up. Now there was no time for the sights, no time to fool around with strangers. But being the curious one, Lobo stopped to say howdy to a tortoise who was out for a midday walk. Now the tortoise just wasn't much on hospitality. He wanted to mind his own business. Trouble was, he was getting a lot of unwanted help. Lobo kept nudging and tailing after him. He'd never seen anything like this. A funny looking critter in a suit of armor. Finally figuring to sidetrack his escort, the old slowpoke veered off the trail, but Lobo went right along with him. By now, Lobo had forgotten all about his parents. It was sort of mutual. Being concerned with house hunting, they had their minds on other things too. So, at a rather young age, he was left playing lone wolf. 
and finding it a bit tedious. He was hot, tired, and thirsty. To make matters worse, his feet hurt, and he was lost, just about as lost as they come. Little Lobo all alone in a big, hot valley. The family was a couple of canyons away, and El Faros figured he'd better go looking for his son. They tried calling to him, the old pack rallying cry, hoping he'd hear it and know enough to answer. There wasn't even an echo, nothing but silence. One thing was certain, they'd better catch up with him soon because Lobo was courting disaster. A rattlesnake has a built-in warning system for those who know what it means. But being a greenhorn, Lobo didn't get the message. In fact, he was so curious he was almost bitten. Finally, sensing he was in danger, he began to call for help. Lucky for him, his parents were within earshot. It didn't take long to size up the situation. They knew exactly what to do. So Pharaohs took the rattler in his mouth and hurled him into the brush. Once the rattler was rooted out, his play was over. Now Lobo could rejoin his family. Sore-footed and tuckered out, maybe, but glad to be back where he belonged. As the weeks went by, Lobo branched out more and more on his own, traipsing around, exploring the countryside. By the time he was six months old, Lobo was ready to run with the family pack. He was bigger now, heavier, more like his dad in every way, except one. He wasn't much help yet with the hunting. It seemed to old El Faro's the trail herd that he saw was some new breed of buffalo moving through the draw. Again there would be plenty, the wolves would have their fill. And so he brought his family to join him in the kill. When the buffalo were wiped out, it left cattle as the wolves' only hope for survival. So El Faro's took what seemed his rightful share. But the cattlemen weren't sharing with anybody. And one day, some riders spotted Lobo and his family. From the very beginning, it was open warfare. Lobo's family started out in all directions with the riders in close pursuit. Along about that point, the cowboys got lucky. Lobo's mother was knocked down. She tried desperately to get away and kept limping along, but it was no use. She tried to find a resting place. Maybe the riders would miss her turn off. But that's not the way it was to be. El Faros and the pups watched from a safe distance, then went to mother to pay their last respects. Lobo, Lobo, remember this day. Man's bullets have taken your mother away. Lobo, Lobo, there's no looking back. Now you must abandon her. Run with the Never again would Lobo forget the smell of gunpowder. He got to know rifles by sight. The cattlemen's battle seemed to be a losing one. It was a war calling for more than guns. The cattlemen needed a lure. A little dogie was about the most delectable come on. There was something about young veal that was well nigh irresistible. The next morning, El Faro spotted the calf. Naturally, he was tempted. And why not? A free meal like this? This all seemed a little too good to be true. Might be that was what was wrong with it. Like an unexpected gunshot, the trap sent the young wolves a scatter. They ducked out of sight quick, all except Lobo. 
He sensed something wasn't right. He returned to his father. There wasn't much he could do for El Faro's except lend him the comfort of his company. Still, there's a kind of nobleness in the wolf. In the unexplained way of the breed, he stayed by, prepared to keep watch to the end. Then the riders came back. He must leave. For all wild animals, there comes the moment when they must go their own road. And for Lobo, that moment was now. He looked at El Faro's for the last time, and then went on his way. The time had come for Lobo to make his way alone. And loneliness and hunger were things he'd never known. All through the long, long winter, beneath the frozen sky, Lobo learned he must be strong, he must be wise or By the next spring, Lobo had been a loner long enough. One fine morning, he met up with some wolves he'd never seen before. He was of a mind to join them. According to pack law, he might be accepted, and he might not. As it worked out, they were kind of hankering for a new face, too. And right off, Lobo was made welcome. In the midst of all the jubilation, he caught sight of a dark beauty on the sidelines, and he knew his searching was over. The black female seemed charmed with Lobo, too. Before long, an old-fashioned courtship was underway, and they began running and playing together in the fields. The one who really had to say, however, was the pack leader, a surly old brute who right away took a dislike to the young feller from out of the hills. And true to the code of the wolf pack, he challenged Lobo to a fight. But Lobo had the advantage. The pack leader could see he wasn't winning. And when you're not winning, you might as well do your losing the easiest way possible. And so, the Lobo legend began to get a little bigger. From that time on, Lobo ran at the head of the pack with his mate at his heels. And a following of the biggest, strongest wolves in the vicinity. When the mating season came on, the pack split up for a while, each pair of wolves going off by itself. Some of them had dens of their own. But Lobo and his mate must find a home. One day in their scouting, they saw across a wide canyon an old Indian cliff dwelling. But how did they get there? Well, where there's a will, there's generally a way. And it turned out there was a sort of a crossing. There was one thin log that crossed this dangerous crevice. The sides of the canyon were sheer rock. One false move, and that would be the end. The wolf's a sure-footed critter with strong nerves and a steady eye, and Lobo had all the confidence of the breed, and so with his feet well placed, he crossed to the other side. Finally, after Lobo showed it could be done, his mate got up nerve enough to follow him. Fact is, in time, these wolves would come to use this bridge practically every day. It came to be part of the Lobo legend. The next few weeks were pleasant ones and the days passed quickly. Then the time came when Lobo's mate didn't hunt with him anymore. One morning, when he got home from making his rounds, he found out why. Lobo had become a father. Sure was a handsome litter. Lobo was as proud as a new daddy could be. As leader of the wolf pack, his fame began to spread. For many hundred miles around, a price was on his head. By every law of nature, the cattle were his prey. But to the angry cattlemen, it didn't work that way. Lobo, Lobo, since man has appeared, he's put you outside the law, hunted and feared. 
Lobo, Lobo, since man has appeared, he's put you outside the law, hunted and feared. Lobo had become quite a celebrity. In fact, they offered a reward for his capture, a thousand dollars. A darn sight more than most human outlaws were worth. Lobo was a legend for sure, the most notorious name in the whole Southwest. Now one day a professional hunter rode into the territory, hoping to take the famous wolf that nobody else could catch. He had the finest tracking hounds to do his task. One day he spotted Lobo and his mate. They gave chase, but the dogs couldn't cross the log to Lobo's home. Well. If the dogs couldn't bring this fella in, there were other tricks to be tried. It was plain as anything, the wolves always came off the log at the same spot. This was the place to set the trap. He set the trap and carefully covered it with a thin layer of dust. Now when the hunter came back, the trap was gone. Sure as the world, Lobo had come passing by and had stepped down right where he thought he would. It was a wolf, all right, but the wrong one. It was Lobo's mate. Well, she would be the perfect decoy for trapping Lobo. When his mate didn't come home, Lobo began to get restless. He sensed something was wrong. It wasn't like her to stay away from her pups like this. Lobo set out to find her, just as the hunter reckoned he would. The scent of man told Lobo that he must find his mate But the bounty man was using her to lure him to his fate Their trail was plain to follow He traveled hard and fast But he would have searched forever to find his mate at last. From the crest of a hill, Lobo looked down on a cattle yard in a small shed. He knew his mate was in there. Lobo, Lobo, there's danger below. But true to your loyal code, there you must go. Lobo, Lobo, there's danger below, but true to your loyal code, there you must go. Lobo knew the chance he was taking, the odds against him. He came on, stepping soft, following the fence for protection. His mate was somewhere near. His keen nose said so. Then he found her. She was alive in the shed. Lobo managed to get away. When he got to the hill crest, he called for his pack. According to the legend, a rally call he cried. It echoed off the rim rock and carried far and wide. Soon ghostly shapes and shadows appeared out of the night. In answer to their leader's call, the wolves had come to fight. Lobo, Lobo, you've gathered your pack. And now you must lead them all to the attack. Lobo, Lobo, you've gathered your pack. And now you must lead them all to the attack. With Lobo in the lead, they descended on the cattle yard. The cattle became frightened, and soon there was a stampede. There was nothing the hunter could do. His gunshots scared the cattle all the more. 
The cattle knocked over the prison shed, and Lobo's mate was free. Together, they went off up the hill. Lobo, Lobo, your battle is won. But now you must travel on. Now you must run to your ancestral kingdom. Man has come to stay. So Lobo, you must lead your pack and family far away. Beyond the distant mountains, you know that there will be a place where man won't follow, a land where you'll be free. Lobo, Lobo, your name will survive, for no man could bring you in dead or alive. Lobo, Lobo, although you are gone, your legend of bravery lives on and on. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs>